Road Journal Episode 1. And uh, here I am um, on the road on my way to Necronomicon. And uh, I have stopped in southwestern Virginia at a uh, eh, sort of average-ish comfort inn. Um, and what can I tell you? Well, um, the, the convention obviously is still a little bit less than a week away. Um, this is Saturday, I believe it's August 17th. So um, the convention is on Friday, but what I'm doing, I live in Southern Indiana. So what I've been doing is driving eastward. Um, and I made a special route to this part of Virginia. It's like a, just a little bit out of my way um, to visit the grave of um, one of my favorite authors. Um, a guy named uh, Sherwood Anderson, who wrote this book, uh, Winesburg, Ohio, a hundred years ago. It was published at least a hundred years ago uh, in 1919. Um, don't know the month that it was published, but it was published in 1919. So about a hundred years ago. And um, that's relevant because I visited his grave. Now, uh, Anderson was, uh, I think, born and raised uh, in Ohio. Um, and there was a town in Ohio that served as the model for Winesburg. But he was buried uh, here in southwestern um, uh, Virginia in a little uh, town called Marion, actually kind of on the outskirts of the town. Um, and the grave and the, even the cemetery are not very easy to find, but I found them. And I was able to leave um, flowers and I left a little card and um, a, um, what else did I leave? I left something else. Oh, I left uh, the front cover of this book. This is my secondhand copy of Winesburg, Ohio. And I left the cover. I wasn't actually very fond of the cover, <laughs> truth be told. Um, it was uh, kind of cheesy, um, but it didn't really reflect the grimness of the book at all. It's not a horror book, you know, but it is, um, a, a kind of a, a Midwestern, a series of Midwestern tragedies uh, and character portraits of, uh, of broken people uh, and self-deluding people. And, um, and I find that very, very, very um, resonant. And so, and, and the thing about, you know, um, Sherwood Anderson is that he is so underappreciated. There's nothing really special at his gravesite. You don't see a lot of, I actually, there were no flowers on the grave. There were no, you know, nobody left little tokens or anything. Um, like, um, you know, other authors who are, are celebrated um, in this, despite the fact that Anderson was um, a mentor to Ernest Hemingway at one point, I think of Scott Fitzgerald too. Um, and he was just, you know, at his peak, at his very best, he was as good as anyone. Um, and I always, my heart goes out to obscure writers, um, perhaps because I, I have a fear that I will end up equally obscure, if not even more obscure. Uh, and I think it's important to praise good work and, um, and not let these people be forgotten. And so, um, I'm grateful that I had a chance to visit the grave. I also, uh, the place was deserted. There was nobody else there in the cemetery at all. Uh, it's an old cemetery where um, a lot of, of uh, the graves are, are quite old. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I was able to, I did a little video with my cell phone um, at the graveside and I read the first little, part of Winesburg, Ohio, there um, in the perhaps naive or, or superstitious idea, belief that if um, Sherwood Anderson is somewhere in some realm, possibly able to appreciate it, he'll know that people still remember. So yeah, that's uh, kind of a bittersweet start to the trip. Um, you know, I've been to Lovecraft's grave in uh, Providence, Rhode Island. And of course, there's all kinds of little tokens that people leave there. Um, the same with uh, Poe's grave in uh, Baltimore. 
But um, here's one of our more mainstream writers. And ironically enough, he's, you would think a mainstream writer would be more um, remembered than a lot of the genre writers. But uh, it's intriguing that and in these cases, the genre writers are more remembered than the mainstream uh, pessimist. I'm interested in pessimists of all stripes. <laughs> um, anyone who is brave enough to tell the truth of uh, bad news about the human condition, I'm all for. <laughs> um, perhaps because I feel a kinship with them. Um, as you can probably tell, I probably look a little tired. I, I think I look a little tired. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I drove for quite a while yesterday. I think it was about six hours. Um, I did not get a lot of sleep because I don't like being on the road, as I think I mentioned in my last video. But um, here I am about to take the trip. I'm going to be going um, further uh, east into Virginia and visiting some old friends, Matt and Dina Warner, who are um, horror writers, a horror writer and a horror illustrator, respectively. Uh, old friends, dear friends. Um, and then I'll be visiting, um, be stopping in there probably for lunch. And then I'll be uh, going up for dinner and to stay overnight um, and to spend Sunday with uh, some college friends of mine who I haven't seen in about a year and a half or so. So it'll be good to see them again. So that's everything that's going on. Actually, I think I haven't seen them in more than a year and a half. Might be have been two years or three years. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm, as I go up the coast, I'm visiting friends, and then eventually I'll visit my family in Maryland, and then from Maryland up to Rhode Island. Um, so I'm kind of combining lots of different things in this trip. Um, so that's uh, the Road Journal, episode one. And um, I don't know, I might not record again until I get to a hotel. We'll see. But um, that's what I got. So take care and... Um, be good to each other.